This episode is sponsored by City Traders and Ethereum. CTI is a prop trading firm looking for profitable Forex traders who need more capital. CTI will back its traders up to $2 million, which is the most in the industry, and thousands of traders worldwide are trading their capital remotely from their own home. It's the most flexible funding provider in the industry where any strategy is welcome and overnight or weekend positions are allowed. Plus, CTI doubles your account every time you hit 10% net gain, which you can scale up to $2 million. Click the link in the description to find out why City Trader offer the best funded trader program in the industry or visit citytradersimperium.com. All right, folks, here we are on Trading Up. We've just done a fantastic interview here with Jason Stewart. It's over there on the Trading Up podcast. Go and check it out. Link underneath the video. Um, he actually walks us through in detail his six-figure day trading the Forex market. So you've got to go and check that out. But for now, we're going to have a look at one of his trades and how he breaks down a price chart and sort of, I suppose, it's an insight into your strategy. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very simple. And we're going to go through just a couple of key steps uh, that we look for when and identifying and entering a trade. Cool, let's do it. Let's jump in your chat and have a look. Let's, let's do it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and hop straight on to EURUSD. Uh, as you guys can see, I'm on the four hour time frame Now, anytime I mark a chart up from, from square one, I go immediately to the weekly. I take my moving averages off and I turn my candles into actual line. So that way I can see uh, where the key points of structure swap are occurring. I gotta see a touch on both sides. But I'll save you guys the time. I'm sure you guys already know that basic stuff. Here's the daily time frame. This is what I was talking to um, him about on the podcast itself, how EU ended up on this big bullish run, and we weren't seeing much retracement at all. So that let me know, okay, once we actually did start to see price lose its momentum, that we would have an opportunity for a good drop. Now, this drop right here is actually where the 100K occurred. Um, but I'll, I'll show you guys more in depth on the four-hour time frame exactly what we talked about so this uh area right here where we had the red cross over the blue this actually was where i got my initial entry um and then i caught a couple more entries down here now this was when i was about 80 90 pips in profit as you guys can see this is a key support zone now i want you to notice we did have our parallel channel that price was respecting and then finally it did break and retest around this area um, this isn't a true break. Obviously, we see price jump back up and got into it. So this was the true break. And I should have anticipated some level of retracement. I just thought that this move was going to occur here. Um, and obviously, that wasn't the right thought process because as price did retrace, then I went my orders here and here went into drawdown. Um, but my stop loss was around this area. So uh, I was still good. It was above the previous highs. Um, even above this previous high. So it was still around this area. And then even as I jumped to the uh, M30 time frame, I'll show, I'll, you know, rewind and show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. So this is the news event that I was referring to. Um, I caught my entry on this M30 crossover. So I got in and literally saw this massive drop and I'm like, yes, we're swimming in profit. We're going straight to our, our key level of support. And then this big spike happened within like a five minute time frame, which then allowed me to get more entries. Um, and as we can see, price did continue to drop. Now, I think I put my stop loss, I put my stop loss around like 18, uh, excuse me, my stop loss and profit at like 1820. And so when I woke up, price was like around here and I actually put my stop loss back where I initially had it. And thank goodness, you know, as, the market closed around this area. Then on Sunday uh, evening, excuse, or I should say Monday morning around the London session, this was the actual drop that occurred. So once again, guys, M30 time frame. this is where I look to actually see a shift in momentum. Even if we bump back to the H4, you guys would see this is a key resistance level. So as I see this occur, one candle, two candle, and the crossover, that's when I was like, okay, beautiful. Now, as we talked about before, how do I maintain my orders? Simple. Keep it very simple, guys. The simpler you can make it, the more confidence you'll have in maintaining. I go from my point A, which is the top wick of my actual bear move, to my point B. So this would have been my first point B. You see, we didn't even get a 23.6 uh, uh, retracement. Then this would be my second point B. And even still, we got a 23.6, which is just continuation area. And um, this area is actually where I closed out. This 1750 area is where I just finally took profit. 
because over here I got put through hell. So it's like, once again, you know, you think about if I maintain the order, my rule is 23.6 is consolidation to continuation. 38.2, if that gets broken, then I close. So even as we continue to, um, you know, maintain the order, it's like 38.2 was respected and continued to drop. The red is still over the blue. So, you know, obviously holding to, to even this area would have been absolutely phenomenal all the way down to my actual four hour support zone at 16.15. But it's just with 140 lots on the line, it's a lot more difficult to maintain an order like this um, than it would be if I was using five, 10 lots. So uh, people still see the effortlessness though, because even as we continue to move our point B, you can see it even as we get down here to our new point B, 23.6 still has not been broken. So it's like, it just gives you that much more confidence in maintaining the order. And as we finally got to our true level of support, this is where you see some of the retracement zones get broken. So even as we look forward now into our live uh, uh, charts and analysis, let's bump back to the four hour and take a look at what did occur after it hit that level of support. So we see price did come and hit this key level um, let's go ahead and remove, remove those those uh, fibs. As we can see, it still didn't break the overall 100% retrace. So even the, the original Fibonacci that I drew still never got broke. And so that would have given people another confirmation as we look in this area up here. Could someone have entered? Let's check it out. Let's go to M30. Let's keep it simple. Okay, perfect. We see we have our crossover. We see price. Look, we always need to see two candles uh, of bullish activity to let us know that a resistance was broken. We got one candle and then two bearish and then immediately came back down below resistance. So that lets me know that price is not actually wanting to break. In fact, there's just a high time frame width. So here we get the crossover um, after a nice bearish candle. Um, even this right here, we could have seen M30 head and shoulders. Um, still just once again, this, this overall uh, bearish, uh, you know, variation would let us know, okay, we're getting the crossover, but the true uh, sell would have been here on the break of the trend line. As we can see, we have higher high, higher low. Um, you know, then we have actual triangle occurring right here. Let's see. So we can overall just, it lets us know, okay, price is gonna have to make a decision. It's either gonna break and, and retest and then go up and try to break this key level of resistance. But us knowing on the higher time frame that EU has failed to break these key levels of resistance, in my mind, we're looking for short. So what essentially occurs, price tests for the third time. It finally breaks through uh, our trend line. Then one candle, two candle, two M30 candles. We have the red crossing over the blue. And that then would have allowed us to maintain the order no different than the last one. So we'll go from the wick of the actual true bearish move. Now notice how I'm not putting my wick up here because that's that's the indecision candle. That doesn't let me know that anything actually popped off. So this true bearish candle is where I would actually be maintaining the orders. Notice my point B is where both wicks occur from the bearish and bullish candle. We have 23.6, which is just another continuation zone. I'm still maintaining even here. Right, we put our point B on the wicks where they're all touching. I like everyone, it's like Thanksgiving. You want everyone to get a plate. So I need my <laughs> candles to do the same thing. So 38.2 still is not broken. Once again, that allows you to continue to maintain the order as you keep going down. Still 23.6. So if somebody had sold up there, they could literally just now be looking to potentially take profit because we are seeing the blue cross over the red, letting us know there could be some steeper level of retrace. But even from that entry level here to where price is currently at, you're looking at a total of 188 pips. So, you know, once again, my stops are 30, 25, 30 pips. My take profits are as much as the market is willing to give me, but I'm usually aiming for at least 100 to, to 300 pips. Um, even on a major pair like this just requires a level of patience. But the confidence comes from the amount of hours that I put in back testing and maintaining orders, even on a demo as though it's real. So when people get that game plan down, then we can go to the four hour and we can check out, okay, if it breaks this level of support, like we're going to be, we're going to be going for a way. So that's what I want people to really, um, 
be able to look at overall. We still have the red over the blue. Now let's look at the weekly time frame. This is what's key is we can see that we're where we at. We're at a decision point with our moving averages. Our red is about to cross over our blue uh, big time. And uh, I at least see price coming down here to like the 117, uh, if not like potentially, you know, low areas, depending on how the election impacts price. But I am big on the overall anticipating the crossovers because what do we have here? We have red crossing over the blue. We have the weekly. It's about to occur. And on the lower time frames, the red is just once again indicating there's more sellers in the markets than buyers. So the thing that we would look for next is we would maintain um, our overall bias of this is a downtrend. Now we will look for setup opportunities. So on the four hour time frame, we're going to draw our point A and our point B. And now we can essentially look at some of these key levels and decide, okay, you know, are we going to get a 38.2 retracement? Is it going to come to 61.8, you know, in between this kill zone? So we're going to need to see uh, more bearish variations. We're going to need to see the, the uh, moving averages shift on the lower time frame for me to even be thinking about re-entering, especially knowing that there can be some funky stuff uh, occur um, during this week with some of these results. But keep it simple, guys. Weekly time frame gives you your key levels. Daily time frame gives you your main support and resistance zones. Four-hour time frame lets you know the direction of where price is going. That's your actual technical structure. The M30 time frame is where you're looking for lower time frame momentum to give you confidence in entering the market and placing your stop loss. And then the M5 is just like the cherry on top. If you want to get a little bit crispy and try to minimize drawdown, then M5 is where you only spend a little bit of time looking at that. But literally five steps, guys, to simplify this game of trading, and it'll give you a much a leg up in the market to um, actually feel confident in what you're doing. Brilliant. Look, that was a fantastic chart walkthrough. I'm so glad we got to see uh, the trade you spoke about in the podcast on uh, a price chart and walking through the, the exact thing. So guys, if you do want to hear that, go and check out the link below to hear the emotional roller coaster that, that Jason went through on that, that particular trade and a whole bunch of other really good stuff that he talks about around psychology. You've got to go and check it out after seeing this. Trust me, go and check it out. Got to check it out. <laughs> now, how, what's the best way for the guys to get hold of you? Yeah, go, go ahead and um, reach out to me on social media, especially Instagram at QBStew. That's Q-B-S-T-E-W. Um, I try to provide as much value, not just in trading, but on psychology, entrepreneurship, and just the overall mindset that's required for us to see, you know, success in all areas of life. So, you know, appreciate you guys tuning in, watching, uh, watching the chart work, listening to the absolutely phenomenal value and questions that, that have been asked. And I'm um, looking forward to getting connected with you guys on social media at QB Stew. Cool. Guys, check out the link below as well to get all those links as well. And uh, do remember, hit subscribe, hit like, and click the little bell. Click all so you get videos like this in the future. All right, see you in the next one.